You're on a relaxing holiday in Greece. You lie on a sunbed, enjoy the beach, and sip on a cocktail. But then, you realize something. You've been lying here for five hours, and you're still as white as a bottle of fresh goat's milk. Why can't you just tan quicker? Well, 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 if it isn't Mr. Pale over here wishing for a different sun again. Haven't you learned from last time when we swapped it out for extreme space objects? Fine. To combat your pathetic insecurities and inferior genetics, we're going to swap out the sun for the most extreme stars in the universe. All just to get the tan you so wish for. But I can't promise it won't sterilize you. Starting with WR142, which stands for Wolf Rayet Star 142. The hottest known star in the universe at 200,000 degrees. That's right, Kyle. Not 5,000 degrees like the sun, but 200,000 degrees. Damn, that's hotter than my grover babes. Oh, no, 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 come back. Ah, anyway, WR142 is what happens when a hot blue O-type star evolves. See, all stars are born and spend most of their lives in what's called the main sequence. This graph is based upon their nature. Large, red, blue, small sub dwarfs. But those really large and really hot ones? Oh boy. Those evolve fast and turn into wolf rayet stars, the rarest stars in the galaxy. In fact, it was so large and so hot during its life that it not only burned through its hydrogen and helium, but it also shed those layers even faster than those gravibabes left me by rotating faster than any star you know. WR142 may be smaller than our sun, but that's only because what you see right now is basically only the literal core of the star which once existed in one of the most massive stars you can find. So while it's actually smaller than the sun, this core alone is like 28 times the mass. And now we are experiencing it coming to an end. Right here on Earth, because you wanted your damn tan quicker. Look around you. Do you see those clouds around the entire solar system? Those outer layers it shed didn't just disappear. They are hot, angry, and spreading at 5,000 kilometers per second through space. So on Earth, you'd see that approaching pretty darn quickly. And for your planet, WR-142 is basically like sticking your hand in the microwave while it reheats your Chinese takeout from last night. Except not only does it blast X-rays and ultraviolet death into space that lights up and heats up all the clouds around the solar system, but it most likely will also start a beautiful light show that electroshocks Earth's atmosphere and immediately dissolves it within seconds. And then the UV radiation from the wolf rayet star would sterilize the entire planet before your neurons finish screaming. Of course, this would only happen if the 912,000 times brighter than the sun star, and yes, that's how f***ing bright it is, didn't immediately dehydrate the planet and turn it into a sand pit of your tanned skeleton. You know, vaporized. Yeah, it doesn't feel so good when one of the rarest stars in the universe destroys all of humanity for your obsession with getting a tan, does it, Kyle? Should have just brought a spray tan. And to double down on this lesson, I will now swap the sun with the only known binary system in the universe that has two wolf rayet stars orbiting each other, because two is always better than one. Meet Apep. Yes, named after the Egyptian god of chaos, and I guess destruction. That should probably give you a clue about the extremity of this system. It does look pretty though. These two stars orbit around each other at about 113 AU, over two times the distance to Pluto. Except instead of ice and quiet and depression, they're ejecting spirals of dust at supersonic speeds, just like WR-142. This forms a cosmic hurricane of hot carbon soot. The good news, you might see beautiful glowing spirals in the sky for a few minutes. The bad news, you're inside them. The gravitational impact on the solar system would be extreme and beyond anything you've ever experienced. And you know I've tried, Kyle. If we'd ignore all the other ways you could potentially die, for now, this alone would force Pluto to be absorbed, Neptune to be slung towards the other gas giants, which would cause an earthly skyline that has a wolf rayet star raiding away your atmosphere, and also Uranus slingshotting into the inner solar system that may or may not destroy you. I guess the solar system gravitational Russian roulette. But wait, it really does get worse. While the stars in the Apep system are less extreme than WR-142 from before, in terms of size and rotation, Earth would still get hit by shockwaves of UV, X-rays, and stellar winds that make Chernobyl look like a scented candle. However, that means I need to ask you, have you ever wondered when something goes hypernova instead of supernova? You know, the explosion that's 10 times more powerful? Wolf rayets are one of the reasons. Remember that fast spinning one from before, possibly close to 1,000 kilometers per second? Well, if it ever does explode, it might go full gamma ray burst straight through your torso. 
See, wolf rayets have a delicate balance. That's why they are so extreme and so rare. Not only do these stars have to rotate fast enough to shed their outer layers, but they also can't go too fast, otherwise they will lose too much of what's called angular momentum. You know, spin energy. It also can't have too many metals, which is space language for anything that just isn't hydrogen or helium. But in order for a hypernova gamma ray burst event to happen with those jets we usually see, they have to originate from within the core. And as they tear through the star, they trigger explosive fusion, creating the element nickel 56, which is what allows us to see these events from Earth. So when this hypernova happens, and it will happen, the solar system's death will look something like this while emitting absolutely outrageous amounts of gamma ray bursts in relativistic jets. If those jets point your way, you can probably think of what happens next. But even that might not be the most extreme star in the universe. Two stars? Nah, that's too boring. Let's add another one. A third star. WR-104 is actually a triple system anchored by a wolf rayet star and two others, including one far away O-type star. It's not like Earth could technically orbit any of these stars. I mean, you know that the entire planet would become unfarmable and surrounded by gaseous haze from the wolf rayet star. But if the solar system was set up perfectly with these three stars, theoretically, for a few years, you'd have a tiny habitable south pole thanks to the Earth's tilt. Enough room for a few nations, a couple of penguins, and one hell of a final party. And the violence that follows? Well, it would be very similar to what we've seen before. Okay, all right, maybe those wolf raid stars were too aggressive. I get it, Kyle. You're just trying to tan, not trigger the apocalypse and make everyone as miserable as you are. Fine. Let's tone it down. Psych. Ever heard about a star that shoots f***ing lasers? Introducing MWC 349A, the most suspicious star in the entire Milky Way. At first glance, it just looks like some random massive star, 30 times that of the sun, floating about 4,000 light years away. Which is good, because that star near Earth would be super bright and probably cause your skin to stop bubbling before you all burn like you got covered in acid. And when you look at it from its current location in the Milky Way with radio telescopes, you'd see the brightest radio source of its kind in the sky. You flip to infrared, suddenly you see that gigantic accretion disk all around it. You go to microwaves and, wait, is it shooting lasers? Yeah, actual space lasers made of hydrogen. But there's more. Lasers can be typically infrared. This star also has microwave lasers called masers. Amazing name. These may come from the accretion disk around MWC 349A that is 50 AU wide. Yeah, almost the size of the actual solar system, and it also has jets launching star material from itself in opposite directions via what's called magnetohydrodynamic winds, which trust me, you don't want me to try and explain. So imagine cooking some fresh popcorn for your lonely movie night, and bam! It penetrates your existence with either hydrogen lasers, masers, or jets of star stuff. Nah, don't worry, these aren't like Star Wars, so you and your cat at home will probably be fine during that movie night. But here's the issue. These beams are blasting towards Earth with such intensity that the star already has lost 15 solar masses just from how violently it's vomiting matter into the universe. And if we actually replaced the sun with this monster, it would be like you just got hit with the Death Star. Oh wait, look, it is actually kind of like Star Wars. You just hear a soft bzzz, and then Earth becomes a magnetically shredded disco ball caught in a death laser from a bipolar jet. So yes, I lied. Your movie night would probably be ruined. But the weirdest part, Kyle? We're not even sure what kind of star this is. It might be a baby star that just formed and got kicked out of its nursery too early, or it might be some bizarre evolved star going through an identity crisis. Either way, it's violently unstable, totally alone, and batch crazy. Like me, when I was going through my first divorce. You know what they say, therapy is expensive and regret is free. Wait, why the hell are you laughing? Remember when your girlfriend left you? That's right, you looked just as much of a zombie as I did when you didn't see daylight for 14 days and only had ice cream. Which reminds me of our next star, a zombie star that literally came back to life. Say hello to Sakurai's object, a dying white dwarf that suddenly said, actually, no thanks, and came back to life. I mean, who's gonna say no to an Earth-sized dead star with the mass of the sun? This thing experienced what's called a very late thermal pulse, which is a final helium flash that made it swell back into a red giant. After it was already a red giant that became a white dwarf. Apparently it wanted more. That's like me laser removing all your disgusting back hair and then it just immediately spawns back. Gross. After regenerating itself, Sakurai's object is now ejecting carbon dust 
that formed a 70 AU wide disc around itself while its outer layers expand and cool. Again, it's literally reliving its death. Absolutely haunting. And if the sun is replaced by this, well, first we'd have a giant red giant there, which might reach the earth due to its size, and if it does, you know, we'd be completely irradiated, turned to ash, and look like a dehydrated sponge. But if Earth somehow survived this with enough resources, we could rebuild! But then the Red Giant would have its helium flash, you know, the VLTP from before, which would be blindingly bright and signal the end of its life. Even the blind fish that didn't even need their sight in the deepest part of the ocean would go more blind. You think, okay, well, we're all blind, but at least we survive. Until we ultimately freeze to death from having no heat due to it being a, you know, white dwarf with no heat. But then it ignites again and starts to grow. Earth gets bathed in a faint reddish glow. Yes, warmth returns slowly. Enough maybe for one single plant to grow. But you still can't see it because you're blind. The whole event literally happens over 30 years. And by the way, now Securize Object would emit that carbon dust from before. And this means the whole planet ends up suffocating because sunlight is blocked. Not that you'd know. Temperatures would crash because the sunlight can't get through. Not that you'd know. And a few months later, the entire planet would freeze under a black fog of stardust. Yes, Kyle, those are the most extreme stars we know to exist compared to our pitiful sun. So you might think that's it, right? We're done? No. We can still replace it with the most horrifying stars that theoretically could exist, but have not yet been found. But first, welcome to HV2112. And no, that's not an STD, although I know you've had close to 2,112 yourself. It's a Thorn Zitko object which is Polis 4, you f This is a neutron star that has been swallowed by a red supergiant. Basically, a star ate another dead star, and now it's unstable, overfed, and vomiting lithium, uh. molybdenum, rubidium, and other exotic elements forged deep inside this cosmic Frankenstein. Yeah, weird elements that you do not want interacting with Earth, and look, there it goes. Of course, this is assuming we are far enough away from the star to not be incinerated first. So, Earth is now inside a slow-motion stellar blender, poisoning the atmosphere with immense toxicity, making everyone ridiculously ill. Or dead. Because the air is now tainted. You know. Maybe. Probably. And finally, we end with the most cursed object in theoretical physics that we hope isn't actually real. The Gravistar. A theoretical third option to how large stars end up when they die, instead of neutron stars or black holes. Now, instead of the star's core becoming a singularity, it gets crushed so hard it transforms into pure energy. This energy wants to expand and grow, which would not be good. Fortunately, it smashes into the rest of the core that's collapsing, and this is what forms the Gravistar, a leopard-spotted black hole-type thing. It behaves largely the same way in terms of how we see them, but it would be the coldest thing in the universe. It doesn't even have an event horizon like a black hole. It has a shell. And this is made from a new form of matter that honestly has no name. Its purpose is to keep the inside of the Gravistar contained, because that energy inside forms a bubble of infinite pressure that is now trapped inside the tightest container in the universe. You don't orbit a Gravistar. You're torn apart by tidal forces, smeared across its shell, and then your atoms are absorbed into that core, becoming vacuum energy and adding to the Gravitar's mass. It's like it's trying to create a hive mind of everything around it. I wonder what the supermassive black holes at the center of galaxies think about that. 